For those of you who are watching this show who don't live in Chicago, please come. I mean, please, for your sake, come on to visit Chicago. Uh, springtime, summertime, and wintertime is cool too. Come, it's a great place to visit, and uh, we need the tax revenue. <laughs> and I'm in the hospitality business, hospitality transportation business, so I benefit when you come to Chicago. In fact, we all win. You win, I win, everybody win. Uh, it's a magnificent place, but I just, I, you know, I know it's America. America, racism, and the, the slaves, and the discrimination, that's just, ugh. a good shot of ending it. Well, not in my lifetime. Maybe not yours either, but on the road to ending it. But it's really, the real, I mean, we got in our, like my neighborhood, right? A long way from Soldier, this Soldier Field. A long way from Soldier Field. Um, yes, it's, we have a history of slavery, discrimination, segregation, the whole nine. And of course, it also, that produced self-hate. It produced actually educated Negroes who really don't give a damn about really solving the problem. They really don't. You know, you get to be educated. See, what happens is that when you get educated, you get a good job, and you become part of the problem. And uh, not in a bad way. Per you know, it is a bad way. I mean, you're not a bad person. That's what I'm saying. You're not a bad person because you're part, part of the problem. But you were warded. If you're a teacher, preacher, politician, you work in the corporate world, and some directly, indirectly, you are rewarded with a nice paycheck, 50000 100000 150000 200000 whatever it is you make. You get rewarded to maintain the BS, to maintain the status quo, to maintain, just to maintain. <laughs> and if you don't become homogenized, you become marginalized, like yours truly. You're on the margins of society. You're on the margins of society. I should have went, man, I messed up. I got to go to work. I should have went over to, uh... let me see, when you come to Chicago, go over to the planetarium. I'm going to tell my customers I'm in the transportation business. That, you know, if you get a chance, you know, go by the planetarium. Sometimes I have time where I take them by the planetarium. And they take pictures and stuff. It's really nice. So you take pictures of, uh, near the planetarium. You see the lake, and uh, it's a good view of downtown. You always see it on the, on the internet, blah, 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 blah. Chicago, come visit us. I don't even see that cool boat. Oh, damn. And so, uh, where was I? Where was I? Oh, and I'm always, I always start off clean neighborhoods, safe neighborhoods with excellent schools. Uh, but out, out here, out where I live, out in the Chirac areas of Chicago, <laughs> uh, the preachers, politicians, potentates, potentates are rewarded with nice salaries and status to maintain the bull stuff. Now, if you, uh, if you are on the inside of the system, preacher, politician, potentate, and you're on the inside of the system, you can change things, you can, but very slowly. If you try to change things too fast, you are going to be ostracized and marginalized. That's the way the, that's the, way the world works. It's human nature and stuff. So the, uh, but uh, you get rewarded to maintain the BS. It's quite sad, but it's just the way it is. If I was a school teacher, I would have. You know, you you get older and wiser. A lot of things you would have done and younger, you're just not going to do. You, you get older, you just, you're better. You're just better. Older and wiser. That's why the youngins, I mean, I didn't want to listen to anybody I was young. Because they were so arrogant and mean. The old folks are arrogant and mean. Either arrogant or mean. That's why I didn't want to listen to old people. There's only a handful of old folks that have some sense. Uh, some people think that's because they're old, they're wise. But then, you know, they're wise, but, you know, they ain't. Some people are wiser than others. You got to go to the wisest person, the wisest owl in the neighborhood, as they say. But the, what I was saying though was that if you're young, you listen to older people for their wisdom and uh, their perspective, and you'll learn a lot of things, save yourself a lot of time and grief and drama by getting some of the wisdom from the older people. And now I'm over 50, I'm considered one of the older people. <laughs> it's all good. Take it one day at a time. One day at a time. Turn sign here, but it says hostel. You know, a few years ago, I didn't know what a damn hostel. I shouldn't say damn. I didn't know what a hostel was. <laughs> I know people were hostile, but not a hostel, where people stay, you know, very cheaply, especially when you're young. But you know what they did down here years ago? They really make this is the South Loop or South State. Over the years, they made it like a college campus, man. They got all these colleges down here and apartment buildings. It's really, really nice. 
only part of Chicago is falling apart and or is slowly imploding, imploding is where I live because I was saying earlier because of the generational ignorance. And it'd be nice if the preachers and politicians potentates would stop some of this inner, inner, generational ignorance, meaning ignorance. Listen, I'm ignorant. I'm still trying to learn this stuff. Come on. But somebody got to come on and try to enlighten the masses. I know it's, people say, don't try to enlighten the masses. You can't peach, teach pigs how to fly. A pig is never going to fly. And if you teach a pig how to fly, it just irritates the pig. <laughs> That's an old joke. I said it wrong, but you get it. That's true. And when you're trying to enlighten the masses, uh, uh, you know, you got to do it very subtly because when you're trying to enlighten people, they get angry. They don't want to be enlightened. They really don't. The show is over. I don't know what show you saw. I don't know if you saw part one, part two, part three. I don't know if you saw this in December, January. I have no idea because we just put the show together and hopefully uh, somebody channel surfs and watches us a few minutes of it. It's a channel surfing show. If I'm at home sometime, I channel surf like, hey, that's my show, it's on. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you've seen this in December or January, no matter if you've seen it in December or January, Happy New Year and all that kind of good stuff. Hopefully all your dreams come true. And, uh, you know, whatever thought, plan, goal, or idea that you hold continuously in your mind must inevitably come into your reality. Happy New Year. Enjoy 2016 now. Wow. Enjoy the year and, uh, and uh, keep channel surfing. Look me up on, uh, on social media. We're out there. Out there in the social media, out there in the Twitter sphere, out there in the in the uh, cyberspace, whatever they call it. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching.